Here is example four, doing, performing a hypothesis test involving a population mean. And there are two parts to this, A and B. We'll work them together here. Just This is my attempt at explaining and showing how important the level of significance can be in determining your, your interpretation. All right, so the average serum cholesterol for a population, the mean of a population, that's why the symbol, the parameter is mu, and it says in that first sent sentence that it is equal to 240 milligrams. All right, so that would be the assumed population mean for, for the cholesterol level for that population of people. All right, here's your key words. And again, this is some reading comprehension. You have to look for key words like increase, decrease, reduce, things of that nature. But right here, it says, a new medication is designed to lower the cholesterol level. Lower. So we're saying if you take that medication, your, your cholesterol level will be less than the typical person. And so this to me would be the fact, the alternative would be that if you take this medicine, it will lower your cholesterol. So look for words like that. If it said reduce your cholesterol, that'd be less than. Those are some of the key words to look for when you work these. All right, so we're basically saying if you take this medication, your cholesterol will be lowered less than the 240. Looking for the appropriate test statistic. So again, you're familiar with the steps here. Continually look back at these traditional method steps if you want. There's two approaches here. I'm old fashioned, I like what they call the traditional method in case you wonder. There's another method out there called the p-value. It's fine, it works. We're just picking, you're, you're stuck with my preference, traditional. So I ask that you do them this way, please. All right, um, but when we're looking for the appropriate test statistic, once again, the key thing to look for is whether or not the standard deviation is from a population or a sample. And in this one, standard deviation is in the very first sentence, and basically it says right above it, it's for the population. I understand that later on we talk about a sample. Yes, every question is going to have reference to a population and a sample. The question is, did the standard deviation come from that sample of 40 people, or is it more representative of the entire population? Population. It says so in that very first sentence. So, um, I don't know, I think that's pretty clear, I hope. But anyway, it's from a population. Then you check to see if it says anything about being normally distributed. And so we read and we read and we read and we read and we're looking for the words normally distributed. And I don't believe you'll see the words normally distributed whatsoever. Hit pause and read the printout in front of you. I know we got a lot going on around here, but I would say it does not tell us that it's normally distributed. So we go back and we say, no. So we better check to see what the sample size is. And you'll note that they did indeed sample 40 people, and that's more than 30. So I think we navigate our way to this Z equals X bar minus mu over sigma over the square root of n. We're back to Z again. So it, again, it's either gonna be Z or T. I'm gonna tell you right now. I'll just tell you right now on the homework, all right? I won't give you any that leads to this use other methods that we don't know how to do yet, all right? You would learn these other methods in future stats classes. Honestly, every question I gave you, I didn't make that happen, all right? So it's either gonna be the Z or the T. You can flip a coin, but I would prefer you read the question and figure it out. Because if you get this wrong, I can't give you the credit that you should have. All right, so now we go and we create our rejection region, and that depends on alpha. And this is where the part A and part B will differ from each other. In part A, you'll notice we're going to use a 4% level of significance. So here we go back with Z. That's our good old friend, the standard normal bell curve. Zero in the middle. And in part A, I'm going to label this as part A of the question, alpha is going to be 4%. All right, so as we've discussed on previous examples, if your alternative is less than 
that will tell us to put this on the less than side and therefore this will be indeed a lower tail test. 4% in the lower tail. Cookbook, in the notes. Rejection region. You have a less than alternative, lower tail. All right, now to figure out that z-score, look, we're back on our good old z-table, right? That's the importance of having your correct test statistic to lead you to the proper table. So on this one, you would be consulting the standard normal z-table that's been around for us for a while now. And it always, table, want, middle, sliver. You guys miss that, don't you? All right, let's do it. Table, want, middle, sliver. Table, want, middle, sliver. I hope we've done this enough times that we can't you know, spend all day on it, but if you got a 4% lower tail, wouldn't you take that away from 50% to get the fact that that middle sliver would be 46%. 46% and 4% would comprise the entire lower half of the bell curve, 50%, wouldn't it? So that's, that's pretty quick and easy math. And hopefully you would then go, hey table, looky here, I got a bell curve with a middle sliver. Might as well, what the heck. <laughs> Table time. All right, what's happened to my life? I don't know. 46%, 45.99, right there. 1.75, 1.75. And again, since it's on the lower half, <coughs> that would be negative, wouldn't it? <coughs> I'll always point out if that's less than, it's gonna be on the less than side, it's gonna be negative all those things that we've talked about before. All right, so thank you, table. You're welcome. And we move on. Now, wouldn't that picture suggest that if we get a z-score that's below that, less than negative 1.75, then we're gonna reject a null hypothesis. That's why this red zone down here, this lower tail, is called a rejection region. It's the values of Z under which you will reject the null hypothesis. Words, picture, same idea. All right. Now, compute. We go put numbers into this. So X bar would be the mean of the sample. That would be the cholesterol, the average cholesterol for those 40 people, 235.25. Hey, look, there's no question that that's less than 240. But what we're testing for is, is the difference between the observed value from our sample significantly different? Is it significantly lower than the 240 for the overall population? That's the whole point of doing the test. You don't just look at the 235 and go, yeah, that's less than 240, good enough for me. We're checking to see if the difference between that and the 240 is significant. In fact, if you pay attention to ads for medications like this, they'll say things like, has been proven to significantly lower your cholesterol, things like that. We're testing to see if that difference is significant. Let's see, the standard deviation was 18, and we sampled 40 people. So that's 18 over the square root of 40 down there. Crunch this, crunch this. It's arithmetic, I don't know what to say. I know that's a snobbish thing. I don't know what to do there. Um, I will tell you that I've had plenty of students in the past tell me, yeah, I'm good once you get me to there. All right, Mr. Uh, sports fan, I don't know. But anyway, yeah, I can, I can push the buttons. Negative 1.669. And I'd love to walk around the room and watch every one of you put those numbers in your calculators and I can't, you know, um, but anyway, you will notice that that's not out there beyond the negative 1.75 on this continuum here. And uh, again, space is at a premium. My apologies for having to do the old erase replace, but negative 1.669 does not fall out there beyond the statistical threshold that we established earlier of negative 1.75. So you either look at your picture and go, did it land in the rejection region? Mm, nope, I guess I'm not gonna reject the null. Or did you get a number out here below this? Nope, 
So I would hope either way you want to read that, in part A, you would come to the conclusion that there would be not enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis. And so in part A, the null hypothesis won the test, and it won the court case, however you want to say it, okay? And so if you recall, okay, let's go back and look at the question. At 4% level of significance, does that medication lower your cholesterol? Well, the alternative was lower your cholesterol, and there wasn't, no, no, there wasn't enough evidence to support that. So the idea in part A, I keep saying part A, is that if we use 4% level of significance, the medication does not significantly lower the cholesterol level. We didn't, I don't know what else to say. You know, we had to, we had to reject the hoe in order to support the proposition that it lowers your cholesterol. And there wasn't enough statistical evidence to reject the hoe. All right, so, so no. And so there you go, you got the answer to that, you got the printout, we don't have to stop and wait for you to write it down like we would if we were together in this room. All right, but here's the deal. What if the company then said, well, that doesn't look good for us. We can't go on TV and say, significantly lowers your cholesterol. It's pretty close though, to the negative 1.75. What could we do as a company? Let's give ourselves more of the bell curve. What would happen if we bumped up the alpha from 4% to 5%? Nobody will notice, nobody will notice. All right, so we're now looking at part B, and as we all know, you change one word in a math question, and, or one number. So part B, alpha 5%. See, this is typically underreported. So if alpha is 5%, now the lower tail is 5%, right? We're increasing the amount of the bell curve that we're giving to the alternative. Okay, so press pause, we're now transitioning into part B. We have the same null, we have the same alternative, we have the same st test statistic. We're just changing our rejection rule, our decision rule, using 5%. Well, so if we got 5% lower tail, doesn't that leave 45% for middle sliver? Oh, right? Table want middle sliver. Hey, table, I got a picture with a middle sliver, 45%. Oh, stop, table time. All right, now look, we've seen 45% multiple times. If I'm not mistaken, and I bet you remember, that's the one that's a tie, and the, and the two scores that surround it, the two Z values, are 1.64 and 1.65, and it's a tie, so the average of those two is 1.645. We've seen that one many times. I don't remember that one. And it's the same process we've seen before. All right, 45% middle sliver, it's a tie, that whole deal. So under these circumstances, we would now reject the hoe if we get a z-score below negative 1.645. All right, now my understanding of things might be wrong, but I believe it's wrong unethical for the company to, to go back and do a different sample, although I'm told they will sometimes. But my point is, let's use the same sample data, okay? And if we do, negative 1.669, so here we go again. We have the same z-score because we're gonna use the same sample data. And so if our z-score is negative 1.669, wouldn't we now, wouldn't that now be out there in that lower tail, which is going to lead to the exact opposite of what we saw before. Because now if we reject the null hypothesis in favor of this, doesn't that enable the company to say that that medication does significantly lower your cholesterol level? So see how we got two completely different verdicts because of the, lo the level of alpha and alpha is often underreported, it's often misunderstood. We could spend all kinds of times on alpha talking about it, 
Um, perhaps I should do more discussion about alpha, um, but it differs. And it's frustrating to me because I don't really know what the Food and Drug Administration requires companies to use for alpha. And I don't know if they're allowed to make their own alpha. I'm not sure. So these are unanswered questions for me that I think would be wonderful additional research for people. Um, so anyway, I don't know. That's the best thing I could come up with, for example, four for you. And we'll come back, and I believe we'll do one more of these, and we should have enough then to be able to, to work uh, this particular double assignment. I, again, will tell you that every question on your assignment will be four points. So please outline all of these steps, and uh, we'll be good to go. All right.